Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome back to another On the Road video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. Today, we'll be taking a look at the water valve on this Maytag front load style dryer. To begin the repair, you must first access the back of the unit. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. Now that we have access to the back of the unit, we do have two 5 sixteenths that will have to be removed on the back in order to take the top off. Then slide back, start to wiggle it, pull off your top and set it aside. Now that we have the top panel removed, we can now gain access and try to remove the console. To remove your console, you have two quarter inch screws that have to be taken off. On this one, looks like you lift up, so there's tabs going across the top. You put your fingers underneath, bend up on the plastic, and start to pull off. You may have to give it a little jiggle, as you do not want it to damage the mounting pieces on the bottom. Just get them out perfectly. The wiring is actually held in by a strain reliever here, so press in on the strain reliever and push it down. Now give us a little bit more slack. The wiring goes all the way back to the console, so what we'll do first is remove the strain reliever just to give us a little bit more room. I'm gonna use the tack puller, lift up on the edge and start to take it out, but be careful as, again, they mount it in very durable plastic. So go slow with it. Actually, I'm gonna take a different route. Because the way that this is flexing, I don't want the plastic to break off, so I'm just gonna cut the strain reliever off There we go. I'll push that remaining through, and then when I reattach it, I'll attach it with a zip tie onto the same spot. The wiring just slides right in, so slide off of the board. Just remember which side it's on. It looks like it could fit on two sides here, so it is on the bottom. Remove your console and set it aside. Now with the console removed, we can start to remove the front panel. Now the front panel on this one is actually attached at the bottom as well as inside, as well as on the top. So to begin, first we're gonna slide my bit case underneath it. You can push up, slide under the case. Next, drop down, we have four screws underneath, all quarter inch. and set your screws aside. Next, go ahead and lift it back up. Remove whatever object you propped it up with. We will open the door. There are two Phillips screws that are right next to the duct. Remove these. Close the door. Switch back over to your quarter inch. Remove these three quarter inch screws across the top. Now 
Now your front panel is kind of hooked on, so it shouldn't drop right off, but if you feel more comfortable when you're removing these, make sure you hold it in place. Pull forward on the front panel and lift up. You do have one strain reliever at the front. Use a pair of needle nose pliers, smash them, push it through. So give us a little bit more room to reach in. You will want to disattach the wiring harness on top. It will feed through the bottom here. Lift up on your front panel and set it aside. With the front panel set aside, the next thing we need to do is remove this bracket. So to start, I'm gonna push through the wiring. Make sure you're careful on the end here. If it snags, the wiring is very small. It'll pull right out. Next, you have a couple of quarter inch screws on each side that have to be taken off. Lift up on the bracket and wiggle it out. The same as the other side, the bottom has a small piece that goes inside the frame, kind of holds it in place. So you have to take that out, lift up, pull out, set it aside. Next, let's go ahead and remove the front bulkhead. There are four screws on here, as well as this will have to be disattached. So pinch it, spread it, drop it down. Then there's gonna be one screw under here that has a bracket that's holding on the actual blower housing piece here. So let's remove these four. And because it has this holding piece at the top, it should not just fall down. Remove these. Now let's get the quarter inch on the bottom. We will drop it and lift up. This is the bracket here, as well as the screw that attaches it. Set these aside. You'll see where it's held on at the top. Grab one side, lift up, start to pull it apart. Do the same on the opposite side here. Lift up on the bulkhead inside. Let this fall off and set it aside. Now with the front bulkhead removed, we have clear access to our drum. To remove your drum, first we must undo the belt. We will drop down. Push the idler back, let go of the idler gently so that the spring doesn't come off. And then to remove your drum, I like to use the belt, lift up, I'll give you something to hold on to, pull the drum out, and set it aside. Now that we have the drum removed, we have clear access to our water valve. There are two main reasons I have replaced these in the field. One of the first reasons is that it is leaking. People will say that water is leaking out of the bottom and maybe I found that it is leaking from this fitting. Could be leaking out of the top. Very common complaint with these. Uh, another thing is that it is leaking inside the drum. Now what I have found is that if you have not used this for a long period of time, so let's say you went through four or five months, have not used the steam feature, then all of a sudden use it for one cycle. Don't use it for a couple of weeks, use it for one cycle. The problem is, is it's almost like it allows sediment to build up right there. And what I will find is, is that after that, it starts to slowly drip uh, the nozzle at the top. So if either one of these are the case, obviously it will have to be replaced. Um, there's not a good way to test for voltage down here at the component as you're pretty much going to have it ripped apart. But you can test for ohms. On the solenoid, you should have around 1250 ohms. This is not saying that it is good, but if it's way out of range, obviously it will need to be replaced. Now to remove it, make sure you've already disattached the water line from the back as well as the other small quarter inch screw that is right next to the water line. Do this first. Then back on the front, we have one quarter inch screw here that will have to be removed. 
Next, we're gonna pull off this ring here. This ring goes below where the water line is. Grab it, slide out, push in on the yellow portion of the water line and pull out. Next, to remove this, generally you'd have to take off the back, but I don't really wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to the back panel. I'm gonna bend down the bracket. I'm gonna slide it over and set it aside. When installing your new water valve, make sure you bend it down again to avoid having to remove everything on the back. And then this portion is going to slide under this lip. So you bend it down, slide it over, get it roughly in place. You're gonna put some pressure down on the bottom, bend it back. You may wanna hold on to the top Bend the bottom down. Just get it in a good spot. Next, we will reinstall our holding screw. I'm gonna slide back in our water line. You could see the mark to where it should meet. So it should go all the way in until it reaches your black mark here. And there we go. Reinstall our clip. This, you'll pull out a little bit on the water line, slide it underneath the yellow stop. Plug back in our wiring harness. Make sure you plug in your hose on the back, turn on, check for leaks, reinstall the one screw on the back. Now we can reinstall our drum. When reinstalling your drum, you will notice that on the drum, one side is larger than the other. So the smaller side is gonna go inside on the dryer. The bigger side is gonna come out. We'll use a belt to hold it up. Start to bring it in place and give it a turn so it sits on the rollers. Lift up on your belt and get it kind of centered. We will reach inside, grab the idler, lift up on the idler, push the belt around it. While the idler is lifted up, bring the belt around, go around the motor pulley with the rib side down, let go of the idler. Now we can reinstall the front bulkhead. When reinstalling your bulkhead, first we'll bring it in at an angle. The idea is to have this rest on the top portion of the back. Now to tell the back from the front, obviously the back will have rollers, the front will have the wiring harness here. So push it in, lift it up, and drop it on our hooks. Once you get it on the hooks, push in and give it a turn. This will start to draw it in. You want it to rest right on the rollers before reattaching the screws. Push that piece of cardboard up if it's in the way. Let's give it a couple more turns. Start to screw in the sides. You may have to pull in and hold it on the bottom. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Now first, I'm gonna lift up this side. Let the bottom flex out as this piece should be behind the metal. Then lift it back up. 
drop it in place. Should fit a little bit more snug. Once again, push in, reattach your screw, reattach the wiring harness. Next, we will reattach the bottom bracket. This, once again, will go in at an angle. This piece here will slide into a slotted area on the blower. Get it lined up. Reattach your screw. Now we can install the console bracket. When reinstalling your top bracket, as I said before, you have these metal pieces. Basically what will happen is it'll slide in at the top as it's a little bit wider, then it'll slide down so that holds it in place. So bring in that portion first on each side. Push down. Reinstall your four screws. Be careful with the top ones as you do not want to break that plastic. Start with the bottom one so it'll draw it in and we'll line up the holes on the top. Feed through our wiring. And just this strain reliever here will actually go through, lift it up and drop it on the top. Now we can reinstall the front panel. When installing your front panel, first we'll bring it into place. Remember your wiring harness that you disattached. It's a lot easier with the strain reliever off. We will glide it through the bottom slotted bracket here. Start to weave through as we push it back some. Reattach the Molex at the top. Make sure you reattach your strain reliever. Bring it into place, lift up and drop it on the side hooks. This is what kind of anchors it in place so you can screw it back in. Reattach your top three quarter inch screws. Next, switch over to your Phillips bit. Reattach your two screws inside. Now the reason why I do these first is it actually draws the bottom in. The bottom ones are the hardest screws to put in, so do these first, they'll draw it in, make it a lot easier. Close it up. Let's go ahead and lift it up and slide our bit holder underneath. Go back over to our quarter inch. Let's start on one of the corners. Now, these screws in the middle are a little trickier as the bottom bows down. So when you're installing it, lift up a little bit. Lift up and remove our bit holder. Now we can reinstall the console. When installing a new console, I would still recommend maybe zip tying the wire on here when we have to put it on, as it'll be easier to take off later. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Remember, it went into the bottom slot I'll weave through a zip tie. 
I'll just leave it there. Put it in at an angle. Do not force it down as you do not want to damage the plastic on the bottom. So it may take a second to get it in the correct position. There we go. So what I did whenever I'm pushing it down, I'm trying to push it in. I put a lot of pressure on these corners right here, pushed in and kind of pushed down. It dropped it into place. It's lined up across the top. Let's go ahead and reinstall the two holding screws. Do not apply a lot of torque, as so we do not want to break these clips. Now we can reinstall the top. When installing your top panel, you have two portions. This portion right here has little slotted areas that correspond with the UI console at the top, as well as the screw holes on the back. So put the portion that goes to the top forward, drop it in place, it should sit level, push it in. Now we can replace the two screws. You may have to slide it back and forth in order for it to line up, but once you get one screw in, it'll draw the whole top in. And this will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video from appliancevideo.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click the like and subscribe to our channel.